today on Pro's Park Bass, we're gonna do Lagoon! What? Okay, so we just entered into Lagoon, and this is the only giant theme park and music park here in Utah. And also, people from Wyoming come here, Idaho, you get some people from Colorado, they all come here, and it's a seasonal park. It's only open up during the summer times, and then it closes at the end of October. In October, it's only open on a weekend, they have what's called Frightmares. But it has been around for a long time, and there's a lot of history here. And I'm gonna just take you on a walking tour of Lagoon, Utah's only amusement park. And it's got some cool stuff. Now, when you first come in, you can either choose to go left or right, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn right. If you look up, you can see the Skyway. They have a little Skyway that goes all the way across uh, Lagoon, and it also goes down deep that way. But we are gonna turn and go to the right. Uh, now, the first attraction that you can see right here is called the Terror Ride. This ride is a classic. It's been here for a long time. It's where, like when you're a teenager, you go on there with your person that you got a crush on, and kind of cuddle up and ride the ride. And later on in the video, I'll go ride that ride. But that's the Terror Ride. And it is just so, like it's almost like a carnival ride but it's it's here it's been here forever it's been one of the originals you'll notice that it opens up the doors open up the top it's a skeleton it's <laughs> real low-key special effects let's go ahead oh let's look at this one right here so come on open up here and take a look at the at the, at the scariest oh yeah that's what you're seeing stuff like that then of course you've got to break a plate people throw in breaking break plates trying to shatter some plates. We're gonna walk right here. Now, it is all decorated right now for Halloween. So they've got like a bunch of um, ghosts and pumpkins and decorated right here for Halloween. In the evenings in October and September, they do what's called Frightmares. And it is like this, you go through, they have a bunch of different haunts. You go through and they're, they're raided by spite with spiders. And if there's like one spider, it's not scary at all. All the way up to five spiders, meaning it's very, very scary. So a lot of people come here for the, uh, for Frightmares. Here goes a little train, they have a little steam train here. There's Sweet Dean Miles. One of the most iconic attractions here is called the roller coaster. Just simply known as the roller coaster. It's had various names over the years. It was like the silver coaster, the white coaster, the, uh, the big dipper. And it was built in 1921. It's a wooden roller coaster. And at one point in 1921, for just a little teeny tiny, tiny time, it was the highest and fastest roller coaster in the world. It held that distinction, I think, for like two months. The reason it was called the white roller coaster is they painted it white. Uh, but then uh, for the longest time, it was just this white roller coaster. But after a while, they had to start replacing a lot of the beams. And as they replaced the beams, they didn't repaint them. So it's back to its natural brown color. But in 1953, a giant fire happened here at Lagoon and burned down the, this uphill this here. They had to replace the whole uphill and also the loading station, which is right behind this little silver area. It is actually on the national registration as a historic landmark, right? This roller coaster. How cool is that? Opened in 1921. It's over 100 years old. Lagoon opened in 1896. 1896. It's over 125 years old. 1896. And when it opened up, they had elegant dancing. That was one of the things they had was elegant dancing. They had bowling and they had like some concerts here. Then it became very popular. In the 1920s, they had horse racing here. But after the horse racing was uh, put here, the Utah government quickly shut that down. It was like, no horse racing in the state of Utah. So they got rid of it. It became a, this became a huge place for concerts. The Beach Boys performed here. I think Elvis even performed here. And so, um, I'm not sure about Elvis. I know the Beach Boys did for sure. And this was like a place where people come in the 1950s and 60s to see amazing concerts. What? My mom actually used to come out here for concerts when she was uh, a girl. Crazy. Now I'm gonna walk you down to show you this area down here. This has got some crazy fun rides. This horse right here is like 
It's called the Wild Mouse. As it, it, it's a very generic ride. They have it in most amusement parks, obviously. But man, it is scary. It's the, one of the first roller coasters I ever really rode. It's got the little mouse there. It feels like you're going to fly right off the tracks. You can see it right up there. There he goes. Now, what you'll notice when you look at these cars as they go by, the wheels are put back. That way, the front of the car hangs off the edge, giving you that illusion that you are going to go right off the edge. So here comes the car here. You notice the front wheels are a little bit behind, so it's like, oh, makes it makes you feel like you're gonna go right off the edge. Now, this is a classic attraction. It's at most of music parks has it. But one thing about it is this. It's at every attraction, every music park I've ever been has a wild mouse. They always have stories how at one point somebody's cart really fell off and people were hurt. Those are just urban legends to help increase the fear. They have this right over here. I think it's called the Samurai, but you'll notice for right now, it's you it shoot water up and get people wet. Right now, since we're in the month of October, it's like October 1st, right beginning, they have it closed. You look at the front of the cart, it's all skeletons sitting there waiting to get on this ride. They've been waiting so long, they turn into skeletons. They see some spiders down below. And speaking of spiders, look at this mammoth spider. It's dripping venom. You see it's kind of wet in the ground where it's dripping its poison, the spider. The spider is a unique roller coaster. They have one kind of similar to it at Knott's Bay Farm, but where you, you go around and it spins you around. This is one of Miles' very favorite attractions. There's the spider attraction. You see it going right there. As you go up around the hills, it spins around. So you're going like forwards and backwards. You never really know where you're going to go. And it's a single car. It holds four people. The one at Knott's Bay Farm, it is, uh, it has two cars and holds eight people. This is just a single spider track. It is really fun though. There they are going up the hill. You'll notice that they are going to turn around as it goes through the ride. Very fun attraction. Then right over here, we have the Colossus Fire Dragon. This is um, the last standing, working, double looping roller coaster built by this Germany company. And I can't remember, I don't know how to pronounce the name. It starts with an S, it's like Schwartz something, I don't know. Anyways, in the early 80s, this company in Germany was famous for building roller coasters. And they had them all over the United States and all over Germany, but then they ended up uh, closing them down and they don't do business anymore. And this is the last operating one that they have in the United States. It's a double looping, it's 10 stories. See going up there, comes right down here right into the loops. There they go, watch. It is a fun one. There they come down. Right into the double loops. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Now the Colossus Fire Dragon is an older roller coaster, but when it debuted here in Lagoon, it was like the height of technology and glory. People couldn't believe how big the drop was. At the time, it was 10 stories, people freaking out, and that it had a double loop. It's amazing. Now, it might seem a little bit tame compared to the other uh, roller coasters they have here, but still, it's a good one. One of the traditions they do here at Lagoon is that during um, like ninth grade, a lot of times in ninth grade, they'll have ninth grade days where they'll, the junior highs or the, I mean, the freshmen, they get to come here and they get to go to a Lagoon. And it's a lot of fun. And they get to come here for like a half a day and get to buy tickets at a reduced price. But right behind me, right there, is this Music Express. And it goes around really fast. And, you know, the Centrico Force like pushes you against. And I remember we, a bunch of us from uh, uh, junior high, we all got in line. And we're all like screaming, having fun. And I ended up sitting next to some girl. And, you know, the ride is going around super fast. And she squished right into me. And I was literally like, oh my gosh. I felt like I was in love with her. All right, so they're going up the hill for Colossus, and they're gonna come right down and do the double loop. And then right behind it, if you look, that's Wicked. It goes straight up and then straight down. I'll show you Whip Wicked next, but I want to show you them going through this double loop because it's such a classic thing here at Lagoon. There they go, just creeping along, and then you get that big drop. Best seats on the Colossus Fire Dragon are in the back. You want to sit in the back, and here they go. First loop to the second loop. Let's go over and take a look at Wicked now. There is a roller coaster development company. I think its name is Arrow. I'm not sure, but it's located in Ogden, Utah, which is about maybe 35 minutes north of where we're at. Apparently, they have a soft spot for Lagoon. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, hey, because they know Lagoon's like a little baby or park. I don't mean like for children. I mean, this is a smaller park. And so a lot of times they'll say, hey, 
we'll do a roller coaster for you guys. We kind of test out some of our new stuff here and work on a smaller scale and see what works and work out the kinks and we take it to the bigger ones. That's how they got Wicked, this amazing launch going up and over the hill. So here are the facts of Wicked. It launches you right, right up, or whoo, right on the hill. You go up to a feet of 110 feet and it's a length of 2,000 feet. Top speed is 55 miles per hour. Yeah, it's a good one. So this area I'm at right now, I am literally surrounded by roller coasters. Right behind me is Spider. Right though behind there is the uh, roller coaster. I want to call it the white roller coaster, so I'm used to. There we got Wicked, and then right here we've got Fire Dragon. There are so many roller coasters down here in this one area. Oh, and plus, you've got the Wild Mouse right back there as well. I mean, come down here. This is kind of a thrill seeker's paradise because they're all so close. You're like bam, 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 and all these amazing roller coasters. All right, we are gonna go ride Wicked. I'm here with Amanda, we got Miles with us as well. We're gonna, we're gonna go ride Wicked. I can't take the cell phone on it, but once we're done, we'll get our whole reactions. Let's do it, I love this. You just rode Wicked, went straight up. What did you think of it? I was, it was like so good. So when good? I, when I went all the way up that hill, I was like, I see different of gravity. Then I went to the top, I was like, oh, it's normal. Went down, oh! That's crazy. It's crazy. It's fun. It like makes your tummy go whoa. Yeah, whoa, yeah. It's straight up, straight down, and it shoots you to it. So beginning to end, a lot of fun. Something that I like to do on Wicked is I like to hold my hands up when I go over that hill that goes right over. That is that negative G where you feel like you're like, whoo. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. Woo. There go Amanda and Miles. They are going to go ride Colossus Fire Dragon. I'm gonna see if I can videotape and see if we can see him on the ride. Oh my gosh, guys, they're going up the hill. Amanda and Miles, they're in the front row. Amanda's waving at us. Oops, I just bumped the camera, I got excited. She's on the very front row. Amanda's wearing the red hoodie and my, <laughs> and Miles' is yellow soccer jersey. Front row Joe. Watch him go down, watch him go through. There goes Amanda and Miles on Colossus front row. <laughs> Our son is such a little daredevil. He loves this stuff so much. <laughs> there they go. Look at that front row. A little twisty part gets going kind of fast. Yeah, let's look for him right here in the front row, guys. Yeah! Oh, there he is, front row Joe. It was so good. Was it so good? Yeah. When I was, we were going on the hill, I was like, Are we going as high as wicked? Yeah, we're going as high as wicked. High when as we wicked. went down, I yeah. was like, this is terrifying! Terrifying? <laughs> it's great. Was it so fun? And then so when fun. I went on the loop, it was you did you did two loops. I know, it was and then when I went on that loop, did you it was like Couldn't even handle it. It is a good one. Colossus Fire Dragon. People here, the locals just call it Colossus though. When Colossus Fire Dragon first opened, you would have to wait anywhere between two to three hours to ride it. It was so popular. It's it's a great one. And you guys just watched Witness Miles riding it for his very first time. Woo! Babe. What was that? How was it? Oh, it's great. It's it's like surprisingly smooth for being so old, which I appreciate. But the double loop is fun. This is called the Rocco, Rocco Plane. Now what it is, you'll see how they're kind of rocking it like this. There is a brake lever in the inside of it. So you get it, you like lean forward and back, lean forward and back, and you get it rocking. Then you pull that lake brake lever, le lever, and wherever you pull it on, it will stop at that angle. And then it goes around in a circle, so you can get some good upside down uh, experiences. Super fun. So that Rocco Plane, I mean, it, it's a lot of people sick. That gets so many people sick. So if you get motion sick, don't go on it. And it had, there used to be another one here and they were like It was the hammer. Two. The hammer, but, but it's gone. It. Yeah, yeah, Is the it hammer's. still here at Lagoon? I'm not I don't sure. know. It's, the hammer like spin around like yeah. a hammer. And those two were Combined like, was just a disaster. <laughs>
they do have a, this is like a children's area here. They have a kiddie land, guys. We're not gonna spend too much time here, but this is a, like a little kiddie's area. All right, so now I'm gonna take you into what's called Pioneer Village, guys. Pioneer Village is a very unique aspect of Lagoon. It's an area, it's kind of like an old ghost town. Uh, the pioneers came here in, um, in Utah and they have some of the original pioneer houses. And they brought them here. They set up this whole little area and making this Pioneer Village. What's interesting about Pioneer Village is it's never crowded. Like you could go, even in the most jam-packed day, you go back to Pioneer Village and walk around and have like little stores and little, uh, like those little areas. There are two attractions in Pioneer Village though. They have uh, two water attractions. I'll show you those as we get a little bit closer. But let's go check out Pioneer Village. We're walking through the pumpkin tunnel. It takes us right back into Pioneer Village. Ah, ah, ah. All right, so I just got into Pioneer Village. This whole area is all about pioneers. I'm gonna show it to you. It's a little village, like a Pioneer Village. So here we are kind of at the end of Pioneer Village. You see, you got the village blacksmith. You got a little blacksmith over there and some stuff. I'm gonna go back this way, past this little straw maze for children. And I think there's some more Pioneer Village stuff on their side. Something very unique to Lagoon is they have lots of grass areas and people bring coolers in, they make picnics, they have these nice little areas. And like during the summertime, you put out a blanket, you bring your cooler in full of food and have a nice little picnic. And they have lots of grass areas. I think that's really unique for a theme park. All right, so now we're going the other way to Pioneer Village and just gonna kind of walk through this area. Right here, they have, this is, it doesn't look like it's open right now. This is the log flume. It's actually, it is, it's closed. But the log flume goes during the summertime. It's a little teeny tiny log ride that takes you, goes through there. But I'll show you the other one they have, it's called Rattlesnake Rapids. And that one you get really wet. Continue on here, we got the, uh, going on, they have like a full gun collection of the Pioneer Village Armory. You go in here and see about different types of firearms and whatnot. It's crazy. These are buffalo guns. Small revolvers, pocket pistols, and derringers. Look how small some of those are, holy cow. Crazy, look at these swords. Combination canes, swords, and guns. This is a cane flask, combination cane and flask for liquor. <laughs> Fully glass tube inside, open it by removing the handle. It was really, that's awesome. So even the pioneer times, people were trying to sneak it in. How cool is it, look at all these different guns. Crazy. European firearms. What nationality are you when you go to the bathroom? European. <laughs> I got these military pistols and oh, look at these long rifles. Kentucky or Pennsylvania long rifles with accessories. Oh, Civil War arms and equipment. Wow. Oh, look at that gun. That's called a rampart gun. It's used to defend a uh, castle or other fortified position. It's huge. Oh my gosh. And these are arms from the American Revolution. Amazing. Yeah, this is the Pioneer Village part. It's a, it's a good place. If you, if you ever come to Lagoon, it's on a hot day, come in this area and kind of relax. It's never too crowded and just kind of look in here. Look, I'll show you a bunch of houses. These are real like houses, Pioneer houses. Let's check them out. See, look at all these little Pioneer cabins and houses. Let's get a closer look at them. Look at this, this is an actual schoolhouse. It's a one room schoolhouse. And they didn't have this door, that was, that's put in here for us, so we don't get here. But this is what the schoolhouse looked like, is one room. And they said that the children would come in here, and they, during the winter, it'd be freezing cold. They'd all huddle, they had like a little stove, and the stove's behind me. They'd all huddle around the stove to try to stay warm. The room, it never got, it wasn't very well insulated, so it never got completely uh, warm. Uh, and then over there, that it's a dunce cap. If you did something dumb, you had to wear that dunce cap, I guess. Sit in the corner. <laughs> Craziness. It was built in 1870. What? This building here called the Wan Ship Cabin was the very first ever two-story building ever built in Summit County. Summit County is this county here in Utah. First ever two-story. Oh, check it out. I wonder, I wonder what, I wonder what, how they, what the stairs, I bet you they were super steep to go up and down. It seems like they probably would be, let's see. Oh, no, that's not too bad. Oh, let's go up. Oh, that's not too bad. This is a two-story home. Can you believe that? There we go. Oh, this is where the, this is the bedroom. A little bed like that, and so it looks like where the baby slept. And downstairs, this was the kitchen area. 
apparently they were eating very well. Must have been some kind of special. Um, then over here was like the parlor, I guess, where you would just relax and read. No Wi-Fi though. This little teeny tiny structure here is called the Smokehouse. It's one of the, it was the very first smokehouse built in Midville, Utah. And I guess apparently I was reading about it is that this is was vital to them surviving in the winter. They would put up all the food up here, you see all hanging down. And this is where they would store all the food for the winter time so that way the families could survive. All right, so I'm gonna continue on here in Pioneer Village. I'm gonna take you back to Rattlesnake Rapids. Let's see if that is, I don't know if that's even old. That's a, that's a, that's a ride that, it's a water ride where you get super wet on it. And this is like a guaranteed wetness ride. So let's go right back here and we're gonna hang a left. All right, we're gonna walk back here. Now that is the log flume. See, it's a little drop right there. It's a log flume. It's closed for the winter time, but uh, we're gonna walk back here and go check out Rattlesnake Rapids. By the way, you have to have a dress code for Rattlesnake Rapids because we do things classy here in Utah. You have to wear shirts and shoes, must be worn. Bikini bottoms must be covered. Just so you know, just in case you guys wanted to know. Lagoon is like nestled like right up there in these mountains. I think it's cool. I like it. If you look at it towards the top, you kind of see that there, uh, the trees are changing because um, we're into fall. Remember that nice little red orange color. I'll zoom in. All right, so this is the entrance to Rattlesnake Rapids. Yeah, right over there. And so Rattlesnake Rapids is celebrating 25 years. Way to go. Uh, kind of a fun feature is they have these water blaster controls. You put in like quarters and then you push the plunger down and it'll shoot them. There they go. So they go through it and it shoots up a big, huge plume of water and gets people really wet. This one though, you get super wet. They do have it kind of curbed for the winter time right now. It's not as good as I call like usually there's water coming off that waterfall right there, but they have that turned off because you know, people don't want to get too wet because it's a little chilly. Lagoon, even though if it gets crowded, it's never crowded like it is, like a massive theme park. But I will say this, if you ever come to Lagoon, the first hour is never, it's never crowded at the opening. And also in the evening, if you stay till the end, it's like families, they all leave and they end at the end of the night, it's never crowded. If you, wait a minute. Did you hit that like button already? Okay, let's continue on. Thank you for doing that. All right, let's continue on. And later on in this video, I'm gonna have Amanda talk about what she used to do here when she was a teenager. <laughs> it's awesome. So we'll do get to that a little bit later on. So let's continue on. I just wanna take this moment while I'm walking through Pioneer Village to get to the other side of the lagoon to tell you how amazing you are. You are awesome. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. I do, I appreciate the hard work you do for your family. I appreciate the hard work you do for your job. I appreciate the hard work you do for yourself. It doesn't go unnoticed. I want you to know that you are awesome. And even if you don't hear that very often, that doesn't mean it's not true. You are amazing and you are wonderful. And don't you forget it. I mean it. You are a bright spot here on the planet. I mean that. And if you are going through a little bit of a rough stretch, my heart goes out to you. And I want you to know that it doesn't last. Things ebb and flow. Good things come and bad things come, but it'll switch around. All right, let's continue on. Do you remember how I talked about like the grass areas, pavilions? I mean, they have like these big pavilions. These are just set up. They're just, you can just come here and sit here and, and uh, it's first come first serve. You grab a little spot, you can put a little table there, cloth, and then this is your area. You can see a whole bunch of people here are ready for picnics. I think that's a very cool thing. I have done that before where I've put a blanket out here in the lagoon in a hot day in the shade. I've taken a nap, then regrouped and got some more energy and continue on with my day. Lagoon has some unique roller coasters. Some of them are very kid friendly. Right behind me, we have one here, it's called the Bombora. It is, it's a roller coaster that's fun, it's quite and quiet, there's no loops, no massive huge drops. It's a perfect roller coaster to get like a little one used to going on roller coasters. Very smooth, Bombora. Now, it's closed for the season, but they also have what's called Laguna Beach. It's a water park here that is open during summertime with your ticket from Laguna, you go right here into Laguna Beach. In the 1920s, Lagoon had a swimming pool. And this was such a novel thing in the 1920s. The tagline of the swimming pool was, water so clean, you can drink it. <laughs> That's true, it's literally what they tell people, water so clean. It was one of the very first filtered pools ever. The water was filtered, it was clean. So people come here, they thought it was amazing because a lot of the swimming pools are just like lakes or whatever. You know, that's what they're used to. But they had a swimming pool here where they filtered the water. So they told people it's so clean, you could drink it. Can you imagine jumping in a swimming pool and being thirsty and then drinking it? Oh. But at the time, people were just like, oh my gosh, the water's clean. 
I just met some uh, family that's from Nevada. This also is a people come from Nevada come here to Lagoon. I mean, you know, <laughs> how cool is that? This is another fun roller coaster. It's called the Bat, B-A-T. Now this is a hanging, dangling roller coaster. Again though, this is an excellent, excellent roller coaster to, for little ones to go on to kind of get used to like having more thrill. The giant hill, it's not too big. It kind of goes into a curving hill. You dangle and have fun and little kids can go on this one. The Bat. There you go, you just kind of see it. It's just kind of, kind of almost like putts along, like, so, I suppose. Not too scary. There it comes. Excellent roller coaster for kids to get on for the first time. The Bat. I've had a lot of people like, why are you here? I'm like, well, I wanted to show off Lagoon anyways. We had a massive amount of requests for videos we're doing here at Lagoon. And this is like one of the very, this is the first theme park I ever went to growing up in my life, Lagoon. Awesome, awesome. I think the same with Amanda, actually. Actually, back that up, that's not true. The first theme park I ever went to was Disneyland. I was three years old. That was my first theme park. But I did come to Lagoon when I was older. I spent a lot of time here as a teenager. This is another one. This is called Air Race. It's a fun one. You can see the, the planes. You can sit a plane and they slowly go. Oh, that one shoots you way up high. But these planes slowly go upside down. See, there they come going through. It's a, it's a little fun one for kids to go on. There goes a the plane. There goes that slingshot. That's crazy. Now, Lagoon does have some areas over here. It's called like the adventure area. See that giant arch? That's a giant swing. It'll pull you up and let you go. I showed you that. You saw a second ago the shooting up the slingshot. Those are an extra fee. They cost a little bit extra to do that if you want to do that, uh, but you don't have to. Now this attraction here is awesome. It's called Jetstar 2. Jetstar 2. I don't know if there's ever just a Jetstar or not, but it's called Jetstar 2. And it's a roller coaster. You sit in it kind of like a bobsled and you go through it. It's very herky-jerky though. This was the ride that you always wanted to do when you were junior high with like the girl or guy that you like. You sit like there together in the little seat together. You kind of like, you kind of hold on to them, cuddle up. But yeah, this has been here since the very beginning. I don't know if there was ever an original Jetstar. Just, I know this one's called Jetstar 2. It sounds like the sequel. I don't know. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you over to see probably one of the greatest roller coasters anywhere. It's awesome. It's called Cannibal. And a lot of times people, they don't realize it's called Cannibal. They think it's called Cannonball, it's like shoot. But technically, it's Cannonball. Like as in, what did the cannibal say when I was eating a clown? Does this taste funny to you? <laughs> this here is Catapult. It's an extra track, it costs extra money. And you get on this and it shoots you up really high. And you can actually even get a video recording of it. It's crazy. I've actually never done it. I always wanted to though. I've never done it. But yeah, you pay a little extra money, you get in there and shoot you up real fast. Kind of crazy. All right, so we're back here. This is a samurai, but really what I want to show you is this right back over there. This is the new attraction that Lagoon is going to be having, and nobody knows much about it. Lagoon hasn't really issued any press releases. Let's get a little closer, and then we'll go to Cannibal. So they've been working on this for a while. Nobody knows. We don't even know what the name is. If they do, I, I, at least I'm not aware, but this is this new roller coaster they have here. It looks amazing. Don't know much about it. But I mean, like, look at that track. It just literally just, oh, it's got the spencer. It's, hold on, let me back up. Look at that track. It's just like out there in the middle of nowhere. They haven't completed it yet. Looks good though, doesn't it? You can see like there's an eagle nest up there. See like the little eagle nest. That's gotta have something to do with this. Maybe this ride's called the eagle nest. Who knows? But I love it. I love it. It looks amazing. So this is gonna be a new attraction they're having here at Lagoon. I don't know when it's supposed to open. When I was 12 years old, this was a giant field out here. It's a giant big field. And they brought all these scouts, as a, as a boy scout, brought all these scouts from all over the state and this big giant field. And we came here and we spent the night and they had like a, a crash up derby where the cars crashed and everything. And then the next day we went to Lagoon for the day. And then that night it just rained. And I mean, it downpoured and we're at the crash up derby. It's just raining on us. And we're in our little tent, I mean, a little, little pup tent. And it's raining, it's it wet, we're miserable. Best night of our lives. We had so much fun. And then the next day we went around, running around Lagoon as 12 year olds. Really fun memories. That's what I think about when I see that field. Now it's construction. It's like a parking lot now. All right, so we're gonna go back here. That's Cannibal. It's a giant Ferris wheel. We're gonna walk past that. I'll show you Cannibal. 
it's done by colors, the Ferris wheel, you'll notice. There's like yellow, green, blue, I think red. So they load it by colors. So the yellow side gets loaded, then the next side gets loaded, then it spins around, then they unload by colors. And those little cars up there, you could spin and make it twirl around in a circle. All right, so here we are. We're at Cannonball. Cannonball. That's just a weird name to me. It seems like it should be Cannonball, but it's Cannonball. All right, here we go. It takes you up this giant elevator, okay? And then it drops you right up that corner right there. This is the steepest roller coaster in North America. It's 104 degrees steep. Oh, there it goes. So you literally go upside down while you go down that hill. I'm gonna go to a different area where we can see the, so that way you can see it a little bit better. So I talked to a, a, like a lagoon cast member and he's like, oh, there's a really good place you can photograph it over here. So I'm gonna go over there and check it out. All right, so this is called Double Thunder Raceway. This all costs extra. You can race cars here. They actually have like a, uh, like a drag racers, but it all costs extra. So we're just gonna go past here, Lagoon's Double Thunder Raceway, and I think we should get a pretty good view of Cannibal. Oh, I just wanna say thank you to that Lagoon uh, employee for telling me to come down here. This is awesome view. I never would've seen this. Okay, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you this. This is crazy, look up. That is the drop, look at that. I mean, you drop off and they go under, and then it takes you right, I mean, we're gonna follow, try to follow along with this. But this is, this is intense. This is crazy. And here comes the car, guys. They, they stop you right there at the top, slowly go, there you go. What? Yeah. Excellent, excellent roller coaster here at Lagoon. I mean, excellent. Crazy, like, oh, look at that. Lots of twists and turns, corkscrews. All right, so here comes the car. I want to show you what I think is one of the craziest parts of the ride, right? Here it goes. It's going to go around the building. Then look right over there. It's going to do a slow corkscrew. Check it out. Here it comes. It slows down for the corkscrew. There it is. It's like, uh, it's very slow. And then it does it again. There's a slow corkscrew. It is crazy fun, though. I got to show this again because it's so intense. Check this out. They get right up there, it slows you down, you slow down, and then all of a sudden you're like, there we go. And then you got this right here, you turn it upside down right there, woo, and then it brings you back. Wow. Oh, this, this roller coaster here is amazingly fun. Really cool. Steepest drop in all of North America at 104 degrees. What? Oh, you guys remember how I told you? Like, it's twirling up there, see? Somebody's brave, they're making theirs twirl. All right, so I'm walking towards here. This kind of takes us back to the entrance where we came in. But I wanted to show you this little area that's got some, his some history here at Lagoon. Let's check it out. Right here to the right-hand side. Do you see this little, it kind of curves up down? It's now, this is like, it is now uh, an arcade. But it was at one point in the heyday this went back, this is a dance hall where they had dances and also they had concerts. And they come out here and they play, I think the Kinks even might have played out here if I remember. But it would go all the way back, they have it kind of blocked off right now. But they go all the way back and people come out here and dance and go to concerts. That's what Lagoon people have come out here looking just to go to concerts. How cool is that? All right, I'm now gonna turn this time over to Amanda and she's gonna tell you about what she used to do when she'd come out here as a teenager because she'd come here all the time and she's got some fun stories. All right, so I came to Lagoon my entire life. I've been coming here since I was a kid. My mom came to Lagoon and even my grandpa, he came to Lagoon. So it's like, what, 125 years old? Yeah. Like, amazing. And when I was coming here as a kid, it, the cool thing was when you're about 14 and 15 years old, uh, our parents would drop me and my friends off here at Lagoon. And the whole thing was to run around with my girlfriends and we would try to find cute boys. So you'd ride the sky ride and then, you know. The ride that goes across. Yeah, and then if you saw boys like coming on the other side, you'd yell at them and be like, hey, meet us at the tear ride and we'll ride a ride together. And then we'd get off the sky ride and then everyone would come meet here and 
you know, we'd meet some new boys and ride the terror ride with them. <laughs> terror ride. I think it's been around since the 70s. Teenage hookups since the 70s. <laughs> All right, so we just found out that Terror Ride opened in 1967. I would have panicked if I was on the uh, Skyway and like and like Amanda, like if I was a teenager and you're like, hey, meet me at Terror Ride, I would have freaked out. I would have been so excited. And then I would have been here. I would have been so nervous. I would have been so nervous. I would have just sat there. Like I would have, I would have like, I would, I would have put my arm around. I would have done anything. Maybe I would have moved my knee so my knee barely touched your knee, but that's about all I would have done. So, so smooth. All right, so we're getting in line here for Terror Ride. There's a little car, it's like a little two-seater. Well, look at this mural they have painted here. Oh, do you hear that horn? That's just to kind of scare your eyes to come out. But the part that always scared me as a kid about this, what is that octopus doing here? It has no right being here. That octopus always freaks me out. Like, like, what is that? Is that a gorilla? And is he like hitchhiking to want to go with you? I don't know. But why is this here? Look at that animatronic. It's like, it's one of the best animatronics on the whole ride, right here. We just found out there are four cars in the whole ride. That's it. That's it. Two in and two out. I just got nervous. She says, except your car will never come out. Oh. I'm speeding close to you, babe. Oh. Was amazing. No, I great. had forgot how good that was. Well, and it, it's changed a lot. They've updated it yeah. a lot. There was like one part that I feel like was, or two parts that I remember, but I mean, that, it's been forever since I did that. I remember that the table, the rat I coming up. The yeah, table. that. And then, like, the girl, the bill. Yeah, oh. I, like I remember the little troll zone. Oh, that was awesome. You guys, look who's here. Sweet D. Oh, she's been watching Miles. Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. She's been watching my house. Been, what did you get? What is that? Slushy. Uh, slushy. It's mine. Nana got you slushy. All right. So now we're going to go do one of my very favorite things here at Lagoon. It's the ping pong ball game. I love this. Let's go do it. They have all kinds of boardwalk games here at Lagoon, of course. I mean, they're all over. But my favorite one is the ping pong ball one. I love it. It's so much fun to play. All right. So we are going to, we just bought, we're going to get a whole bag of ping pong balls. They're gonna load it up for us and we're gonna throw them in there. If we get it in a yellow dish, we win three more balls. If we get in a blue dish, we win a baby prize right there. The green dish wins a jumbo prize, which I think those medium ones are jumbos. But if you get that ever elusive red dish, that's a jumbo prize. I like this. All right, here we go. You ready, Miles? Throw it in. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, ready? All right, this is a dance. You ready, Miles? This is a dance technique. You ready? This is this is pro level. One more try. That was terrible. Pro level. Oh. All right, little guy, you got this. No, you got, you throw it in there hard. Throw it in hard. Good job. Okay, Miles. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yellow. <laughs> All right, show us how it's done. Come on. We got it. We got it. Oh, oh that oh, stuck right there. 
that might have been worth one ping pong ball. I think we get one ping pong ball for that. You guys, uh, that's so, Sweet D, was that fun? I, I play that game every time I come to Lagoon and it's super fun. It's a great game. I'm terrible at it, but it's a great game. It, I mean, I, I felt like, I mean, I felt like we got our entertainment. <laughs> yes, and more. <laughs> I really appreciate it. If you guys can hit that subscribe button, you can just subscribe. We have a whole bunch of more content coming out here. We got, I'll be going back down to Disney with tons of new Disney content coming out. All kinds of cool, fun things. So hit that subscribe button and also hit that little bell notification. That way you're always notified we have new things coming out. And we got a lot. I got a lot of Disney content coming out, like some crazy stuff. So, all right guys, thanks so much. You are amazing and you're wonderful. Thank you for watching Pro's Podcast. I'm Chris Provost. You're the best. Hit that like button.